What's going on? It's CVV Chris Van Vliet, and right now you're listening to Conrad Cushman and everything pro wrestling. Folks, welcome to Everything Pro Wrestling. Everything Pro Wrestling is a show by the fans for the fans. I'm your host, Conrad Cushman, being joined tonight by my partner in crime, the one, the only, the man they call Derek. What's going on, D? Yo, yo, what's up, everybody? We are here to review AEW Forbidden Door, the pay-per-view some of us thought we may never get, but it finally has happened. Derek's first time getting to see some New Japan, and we're going to cover a lot of interesting topics for you guys, if you will. So make sure you guys hit that like button, share this, whether you're listening on the audio version or the YouTube version, Twitch, wherever you're watching this, and subscribe to the channel and tell all your friends to come in here, and let's get ready to talk some AEW Forbidden Door. Let's go. It's it's been one man. It's been one, bro. Who would have ever thought that we would have gotten to this point to finally get this show, the Forbidden Door pay per view, man? Man, I never thought it was gonna happen. There was a time when AW first started where it was like, "Yo, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling." hates AEW's guts, hates them. And we finally have gotten to this point. It's been a long time coming. You got to remember, New Japan at one point lost the Bucks and Kenny Omega to them. They had the world in their hands, and they probably felt robbed, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, when, you, when you lose a star caliber like that you, to another company, a, a brand new startup company, how are you supposed to feel? I'd be pissed as hell. <laughs> you you gonna be pretty pissed. Oh yeah, you gonna be pretty pissed. I can't front. Um, we got a lot of people here in the live chat joining us. What is going on, everybody? Uh, Top Gun Hollywood. Hello, I'm Top Gun Hollywood. What's going on, brother? Good what to up? see you. Good what to see up? you. Uh, wrestling. What the heck? Kingston said, "F you to Cesaro." We'll get into that in a moment. Cakes did it. Claudio had bad history on the Indies. Good evening, everybody. What's up, Matt? Good evening. Um, by the way, hope you guys like this. I we were going to New Japan, so I rocked this great Muda shirt. Shout out to my brother who got this for me. Definitely a dope shirt. Uh, wanted everyone to check it out. Wore it special tonight for Casey Briggs. Big great Muda fan. <laughs> um, let me see here. Damn, so legit. Yo, that Tony Strange graphic is killing me. I knew people would like that. I knew it, man. That was that was great, right? I was sitting there and I was like, I don't know if I should put that on there, but Tony Doctor Strange had to yeah. go on the graphic. Yeah, there, there was no way you couldn't put that up there, bro. You had to, right? BJ said, "What a damn good show!" I'm driving back to the house right now, but we will be chatting as soon as I get home. Excited to hear what Derek thinks of the crossover and see if he's buying into New Japan now. Great show, ZSJ made Claudio work for that debut, man. Uh, I'm still disappointed it wasn't Kurt Angle or Sasha Banks. <laughs> you know, Kurt, Kurt can't handle that no more. Forbidden Door, real name, no gimmicks. What a great show. Has something for everyone. Action delivered on every possible level. Uh, the show is awesome. Casey said the shirt. You see it, buddy? Great Muda, baby. Great Muda. Um, hold on. We got a bunch of comments in here. Sick. Saying, is it just me or do you guys do any of you guys feel that blood from Moxley in this match seemed a little forced? I'm all for blood in the match, but I kind of felt forced and unnecessary. Match was great. Eh, eh. That's how that's my answer. It's just eh. yeah, a little, uh, little bit of column A, a little bit of column B. Right? For all the injuries, the show was straight fire. Casey Briggs says, What's going on, Casey? Uh Deanna says, Hey, hey, what up, Deanna? ELP titty twist and sting. <laughs> We'll get into that. Okay, real question. Derek, did you like it? I mean, I guess we could start off with that. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. We'll, we'll get into the deets, but Derek's saying, yeah. yeah Top Gun yeah. Hollywood, I appreciate you coming in here, man. Uh, Connor No Soccer. What's up, Connor and Derek? This is the first show I watched in a while, and it got my interest in wrestling get after a few years, but my love is soccer. Enjoy it, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Mr. Neglect of the shirt. Thank you, Mr. Neglect. I appreciate you. Good, sir. 
Uh, Terrell, from what it looks like, All Out will be in New York City. All Out will be in Chicago. Chicago! Yo, let me say this. Chicago crowd tonight definitely kept the fucking energy up throughout Ooh. the entire night. Man, they, they had energy from start to finish. Like, yo, kudos to y'all, man, because that, that's a, a long show. Boo this, man. Japanese Goldberg, how dare you? <laughs> uh, Jesus, sup, Conrad, Derek. Pay-per-view of the year, Jesus is calling right oh, now. Hold on, bro. Oh, you mean Jesus De Leon? What's going on, Jesus? Uh, all them going to AEW is a business move. Feelings have no place in the land of big business. Nope. Top Gun mm-hmm. Hollywood says, nice shirt. Thank you, sir. Juggernaut 097. That was a great show. I agree, Juggernaut. Um, Ace says, what's up, Conrad and Derek? What's good, bro? What up, what's what good? Uh, Jet planes. I don't care what anyone thinks. I freaking loved everything. Deanna says Tajiri is the goat of Japanese wrestling. Hey, I like Tajiri too, brother. Bren, good show ends with a twist. I mean, spin. Get it? <laughs> uh, what up, C? What up, D? What up, E? What up? What up? Uh, the ending of the IWGP title match at this point. We're gonna get into that. I have a theory on that actually. Uh, yo, Eddie is entitled to be mad, but he got to be professional, man. That was definitely uh, shoot. No work there. Uh, Deanna said that crowd was fire. Great mood has always been my favorite. Uh, recently went back and saw some of his matches. So great. Facts, man. I appreciate you guys. Uh, Derek's a nice name, somebody said. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, uh, at least New York City gets Grand Slam. All out in Chicago. Thanks for the heads up. Salute. Yay. So Grand Slam on um, September 21st, I believe. I haven't written down the notes. We'll talk about it, but New York City's getting a dynamite. It's probably going to be like a pay-per-view level quality show. So we will prepare ourselves for that. Let us get into this card, though. Let us not waste any time because I got to work early in the morning. So let's get into uh, some of these buy-in matches. Hopefully, I click the right ones. First, we start off tonight with QT Marshall and Aaron Solo of the Factory versus Yoshi, Hashi, and Goto. Pretty basic match for me. I'm telling you guys this right now. Like, I do not like Yoshi, Hashi. I never have. I never will, and I'm not a fan of QT Marshall and Aaron Solo. QT's good, but he gets the he gets the heat on the team. But I was cheering for Goto and Yoshihashi just because I like Goto out of all of them. Um, good match playing Yoshihashi and Goto get the win. There's really not much to talk about with this or write home about. I mean, if someone in the chat has a comment, I'll try to read it. But yeah, yeah, that's that's it. Send home. <laughs> don't act like you like Tajiri now. <laughs> you hate him and Chavo. I've never said a bad word about him or Chavo Guerrero. Chavo, Chavo, you are always welcome to come on this podcast, brother. I don't know what Casey's talking about. Big fan of the Guerrero family. Casey's tripping. And Tajiri's great as well. I just like Muda, though. All right? Casey just can't help that. He's he's being a hater. We had a match added, Derek. Um, I, did you have any thoughts on this, or can I just keep it moving? You just keep it moving. <laughs> Nick Camarado versus Lance Archer. Hoss fight. I felt like it was two AEW guys. I don't know why this was on here. I know Lance Archer is going to be in the G1 for New yeah. Japan, which is their big tournament to determine who will get the uh, championship match at Wrestle Kingdom in January. Yeah. 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 It's what it was. It was a Hoss fight. It was good. I like Nick Camarado. We got to get him away from the factory when it's time to push him. Yeah. And Lance Archer is there. Like, I feel like he's loved in Japan. When he's they said his name, he got a huge pop in Japan. But in AEW, we got to treat this dude better, I feel. Yeah, um, I, I think sometimes um, he gets pushed to the wayside. Um, I, I, he had that that one big push in the beginning, and it just kind of, like, fell off. But I, I, we definitely need to get back to pushing him more because Lance Archer is good. Right. Not bad, man. Uh, Kyra, my man, how can you not like Yoshihashi? I've never liked Yoshihashi. It's just one of those unexplainable things. I'm just like, oh, dude, oh, you're the worst. <laughs> Someone just beat this guy. Um, it's all good, though. He's he's a good wrestler, but I'm just not a fan of his personally. Uh, they're definitely going all in, I see. See what I did there? Maybe Sasha in the New York City show? I'd be down with that. Yeah. I'd be down with that. Yoshihashi is uh, <laughs> New Japan's most failed experiment. See, BJ knows. They, they just forced him at some points in time. I like Nick. He needs more time to show out. Nick needs to get away from QT. He could be something for sure. Yeah, he's definitely the one out of that group. Oh, and I guess a go-go is pretty good, too. He's got something, too. Yeah. But that's separate, though. Like, they're two guys who I wouldn't even mix together. Yeah. Um, in the end with this one, though, Blackout Slam. Archer needs to win because he's going to the G1. 
Uh, out of the buy-in matches, I will say that this next one was uh, it's probably my favorite. It's probably my favorite. Uh, Keith Lee and Swerve Strickland versus El Desperado and uh, Kane Amaro. This was a phenomenal match, bro. Yeah, this uh, this, this one was on point. This this was ah, you know. <sighs> The the breakup between Keith Lee and Swerve is bound to like come to a head. Yeah, but they didn't do it yet, and I I probably should have thought better of this. I actually picked El Desperado and Kane Morrow in my predictions to win this. Um, what, what do you think of the the whiskey to the ring, Derek? And Keith Lee got sprayed with the whiskey at one point by Kane Amaro. Uh Desperado and Swerve had that great back and forth. Like th- I thought this was a fun match. No, th- th- this was really good. This was really good. Um, you know it's. When you get a match like this and then you have a team that's bound to break up, you know you have to set it on fire. You know, granted, yes, it was it was on the buy-in, but hopefully they make it to the bigger stage and perform before they get hit with the, all right, bro, tired of you. I know you're tired of me. It's time for us to move on. You my boy and all, but I, I'm not a tag team player. Now, they went back and forth in this match, and at first I thought the roll-up after the whiskey to the face, Keith Lee was losing, <laughs> but he was able to recover, and he ended up hitting the uh, BBC. And I know what a lot of you kids are up in here thinking. Get your mind out the gutter. BBC is not what you think it means, all right? <laughs> BBC is... The Big Bang Catastrophe is what he hit, all right? I know there's some sickos out there just trying to wonder what that is. It's the Big Bang Catastrophe. Do not Google it. I promise you. Do not Google it. But they hit that. They get the win. Uh, I thought it was very well done. Oh, yeah. And uh, following the match, we get a Hobbs and Ricky Stark segment, and they kind of talk shit to them back and forth. I like it. I think that that feud's still not done, and it got Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs on the show. There was a lot of people who don't get pay-per-view time that got pay-per-view time tonight. Yes. I like that. And that's exactly what they needed to get that time so that they could, you know, they, you know, just just be there. You know what I mean? Like, because then because then that opens the door. Like, all right, you did what you did your thing on in a pay-per-view where you didn't really have the time, but you had the time. So now we can push you on the next pay-per-view, potentially, because you showed us what you did on this one. Yeah, there was a lot of good stuff here. Uh, Captain New Japan is the most failed experiment, and people are jumping into some forward matches. Despin, uh, Kane Morrow, Swerve and Lee was bonkers. Yeah, that was my favorite out of the buy-ins, too, Deanna, easily. I don't know about you, the favorite buy-in match, or are you going to go with the next one here with the uh, ass boys? <laughs> I don't know. That, that, that one might... Might be my favorite. BJ's giving it a double thumbs up. Definitely thought Lee was going to take out Swerve when he uh, blinded uh, when he was blinded to push the breakup, right? Cray, what's up, guys? Been a while, been uh, but here for the review. What's up, Cray? Thank you for coming in. Uh, oh, my ex was a fan of that BBC move. She said she always loved the BBC. Um, okay, looks like we got the official graphic for someone being all elite. I figured. Uh, Starks called them the Applejack Man and broke ass Philip Banks. <laughs> he did, he did. That was jiggity jacked. And also have to um, acknowledge the fact that uh, Ricky, I, I'm not prepared for any of this. And Derek always has to play these games. Spanish. If you guys don't know, Ricky Spanish gets yelled every time in the chat when Ricky Starks pops up on the screen. And uh, yeah, even even Sammy Guevara's got his own. So Spanish God, more on him momentarily nah. when it comes to the Forbidden Door. Now the next match, do I have the graphic for this? Come on, ass boys! I don't know where it is. I don't see it in here. I don't see it. I'm not forcing myself to look through all of this. <laughs> if it pops up, it pops up. But the ass boys and. I guess I will say the gun club because Billy Gunn was in it too, but he's an ass man. So yes, these guys ended up having a, a good match here with the new Japan dojo crew. This match was pointless. Dan Housen kind of stopped them after their rhyme and uh, he had a special song and the ass boys got pissed off because it was a song that he had dedicated to them before they run to the back 
with the boosters on, ready to beat it the brakes off of Dan Housen. They don't, though. I don't think they ever found him. And this led to a two-on-four matchup. But New Japan Dojo are inexperienced wrestlers, so they got their asses whipped throughout yes. all of this. Uh, this leads to them getting the Famouser and then that, the mic drop. Elbow off the top rope. Caster and Billy Gunn get the win for their team. Ass Boys did nothing right. in this one. Let me hear you say, Ass Boys. Ass Boys. Not to mention, Billy Billy dropped down the uh, the classic, I uh, can't say the words, but. What? Oh. <laughs> yeah, Billy, Billy Gunn's always super intense. That dojo guy with a mustache looked like Elijah Wood. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So good. So good. Uh, main card here. We've got ourselves the opening contest, which was this matchup here with uh, young Christopher Jericho and his partner, Sammy Guevara and Minoru Suzuki versus Eddie Kingston, Wheeler Yuta, and Shota Aminu. Let me tell you. Let me tell you this going into this first match. Shota Aminu stole the show, I felt, out of yes. a lot of them. Like, the one who I didn't expect to do much kicked ass. And I actually thought that Kingston brought it, and I thought Yuta, yo, Yuta started off this match with German suplex after German suplex on Jericho, and he was getting cheered, bro. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. Yuta is is Yuta is a beast, bro. I, I can't even front, you know. I'm, I'm glad they uh, let him play the uh, – Sort of like I'm the weak, weak man card or whatever, and um, now now that he's with uh, Blackpool Combat Club, right? He, he they let him loose. That boy Yuta is nice. Willer Yuta is nice, man. Gosh dang, I was hoping for Shota to get his revenge for his father and Pen Jericho. Wasn't happening, man. Wasn't happening. Yeah, Yuta showed out in this one. Definitely. Um, we got a lot of trios mayhem in this. Usually, I would think we would hear something from Derek, but I don't think they really had any issues in this one. No, this this one was actually actually clean. This one was clean. But uh, you you I know you don't have anything to hate on, bro. There's no, nothing. No, I don't have anything to hate on. I, I'm just saying, you know, that this was clean because of said ring work. We'll say ring work. Yes. Come on. Just saying this is clean match, bro. It was a clean match, but there there were there we had company. <laughs> I had to stop that, y'all. That, that was that was the stop, Derek. We ain't hating on this match, man. No, I'm not hating on it, bro. It was a good match. I'm just saying everything was pristine and proper because we had company. Shota Aminu <laughs> ends up, they clear out all the baby faces, and Shota ends up getting caught with the Judas effect. Jericho took advantage. I thought it was a wise move. It I, was. I, I really had nothing to complain with this one. He came in. They did their thing. That's it, man. That's all you had to do. That's all you had to do. Deliver, deliver, deliver. And they did. I thought, I thought well done by uh, everyone involved in this matchup here. Uh, going in next... We have and oh JAS winning this meant and I guess technically with Suzuki they have the man advantage now going into the blood and guts which we will be reviewing on Wednesday, Wednesday. so make sure you guys are in the house for that um, unbelievable uh, you notice Sammy and Ty didn't do none of their BS because Suzuki wasn't going to deal with that yeah there was fear when Suzuki's by. Uh, what are they going to do with Shota in the UK? WrestleMania 8 on the GameCube had more grapple moves. Shooter is a future star. Sapphire King, what is going on? Thank you for coming on in. Thank you. Uh, where, the, where that ass boy song? You can probably find it on uh, YouTube or Dan House's Twitter. <laughs> Derek's being nice, laugh out loud. Suzuki and Kingston are crazy. I love them. I love them. Uh, Tokyo, look up two minutes to late night. Boom. Thank you, uh, E. Love the chat, man. Best chat in the world. Best chat in the world. Hit that like button if you guys haven't already. Help out the podcast as best as you can. Let us get into this this winner-take-all matchup here. This was another one where I found uh, things to be quite interesting here. All of the tag teams involved in this one, 
this one was going to be a pain in the ass. Yes. I knew this one going in. Winner take all. So AAA tag titles aren't on the line because of bullshit politics with CMLL and AAA, and they don't want any wrestlers associated with either show to be in. Ain't got time for that hot garbage. FTR probably said, F that, I do what I want. So they're putting up the ROH tag titles, and we've got the IWGP tag titles on the line here. And Rapunky Vice gets a shot at both. Why? Because why not? So in all of this, Dax Harwood leaves the match early on with a hurt shoulder, bro. If I could tell you how we all feared, you cannot do any injury angles right now. My heart cannot take any more for no. any company. There are too many people hurt on some bullshiggity. So right. we got to make sure people are good here. Yeah. Uh, so as soon as he dropped that elbow, I was like, oh. Uh... Or, yeah, he, he went out with the shoulder. He rolled right on out. Cash Wheeler then is stuck by himself. There's no one for him to tag except for, I guess, the other babyface team, Rapungi Vice. United Empire is dominating. Jeff Cobb is that boy. Like, if you don't know, if you didn't watch Lucha Underground, the monster Matanza was played by Jeff Cobb. Jeff Cobb is one athletic SOB. Oh, super good, bro. Super good. And Great O'Connor's living his best life, bro. She's got pictures in the hot tub. If you're like under 13, you probably don't even need to know what I'm talking about. But Great O'Con is living his best life, bro. Right. Yeah. He he's my idol. Right. Um, put Shoda under Regal right now. <laughs> uh, hit me with your question whenever. Uh Jeff Cobb lost. Hey, you know how it goes, man. You know how it goes. Um, Triple A need to get the head out of their sombrero. <laughs> Peace, bro. Peace. 20 points. Uh, the balls, <laughs> they have to do an injury angle. Matanza, yes. Uh, Jeff Cobb and Great O'Conn looking like monsters. Sapphire King says, I'm 13. Sapphire King don't need to be looking up what I'm talking about then with Great O'Conn. Great <laughs> O'Conn's <laughs> tripping. Um, getting back into this, the, the matchup here, dude, was just phenomenal. Dax comes back out to a big pop. We get a double suplex. Cash... Dives over Trent's body. Mm. Derek absolutely loved that spot. Yes, that 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 was dope. Uh, j- just the fact that they tag team to get the uh, the suplex down, and then he goes right over to get to to try and get the pin. Yo, he got super high on that. Super super high. <laughs> super. It looked good though. Cash Wheeler did his job on that one. Yeah. I I I just couldn't understand how beautiful it looked, and it just worked in that situation. It was perfectly timed. Uh Rapungi Vice hit the storm zero on Jeff Cobb. I couldn't believe that at one point, yes. but Wheeler makes the save. And then FTR is able to catch Rocky Romero with the big rig. RIP to my man Brody Lee. One, two, three. FTR are now the IWGP World Heavyweight Tag Team Champions. Ring the damn bell. Ring the bell for my boys. FTR have won, man. These dudes are the, if they win the AEW tag titles, they are the Ultimo Dragons of tag team wrestling, bro. I want a picture with all them damn belts held up. Like, no one is better than FTR. They're my favorite tag team right now in AEW. Bro, how, how do you how do you set that up, though? Because you, you know the Young Bucks are going to be like, no, we're the greatest. That's, that's probably going to be the matchup, bro. All out. Ooh. Time to let them show that ass. Right. See who's the best tag team. Yes. Casey said almost as high as RVD. Great Ocon says consent is sexy, though. He's a real-life Smokey the Mountain Bear. He definitely is. <laughs> FTR will win the AEW belts as well. Facts. Bucks, FTR, winner take all at all out. I'm with it. Yes. I'm with it. And neither side better be getting hurt. Just enjoy the great tag match. Right. I don't hear no crying. Uh, moving forward, man. Tony Schiavone interviews Juice Robinson and Jay White. Juice Robinson was on his shit here. So if you don't understand this, Juice Robinson is holding the IWGP championship physically, even though he had to vacate the belt because he couldn't be there. But he's telling him he's rock hard. He ain't giving up shit. And that's because he's in Bullet Club. Come take it from me. And Jay White promos about his match later on. Less is more. We'll move it on that. Next up, though, we have ourselves the All-Atlantic Championship title match here. Got ourselves a four-way. Malachi Black, Pac, Miro, and Clark Connors, who had to replace Ishii. When I tell you this show is cursed, this show was cursed, bro. Yes. Ishii was hurt. Punk was hurt. Daniel Bryan was hurt. Brian Danielson, whatever you want to refer to him as, all these people cannot be this hurt, bro. 
we cannot have this. No, you gotta be, gotta be way more. It, it, well, it's nobody's fault, no. but it was just like, dude, what a shitty timing. Hiromu was getting a fever. Like, yes. there was just so much shit that went wrong on this show, and I'm sure it changed a lot of the booking. Yeah, it, it definitely did. And for them to uh, stay the way that they did, they have to. It just they just have to keep keep moving, you know. And for what it's worth, the show in its entirety and everybody that showed up definitely uh, did their thing. Yeah, I thought it was a great effort put out by the entire roster, as uh, many of you guys in the chat had indicated. Now, getting into this matchup here, All Atlantic Championship, first champion being crowned. I thought that Clark Connors is someone who I actually really do like from the New Japan Strong side. Um, he, he's really good. I just think he, it wasn't his time yet to be in this match. I think Ishii would have been more appreciated by the fan base. Oh. But, but he still did well. Pac was in here. He seemed like a favorite on Twitter that just rallied up. Stop doing that. <laughs> Every time you think of Pac. And, and I, uh, my wife was mentioning like Lord of the Rings when she saw him. I'm like, y'all better leave that man alone. <laughs> Pac will jack you up, bro. That's my dog. Yep. He's one of my favorites. Pac, Pac is nice, though, bro. I, I'm not even going for him. Pac was one of my favorites when I first saw him in New Japan, bro. He had a match with, I think it was Ricochet, maybe. Or Will Ospreay, one of those two. And I was like, yo, this match is un and believable I, th- I want to say, I, I think I remember you showing me this, and I want to say it was Will Ospreay. Man, I think it's Ricochet, but I could be wrong. I'll have to look it up. But it was, um, he was amazing, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely, bro. Like, hands down. Hands down. <laughs> Conrad, do you like Retribution? Hell no, not the WWE one. <laughs> Great O'Con, OnlyFans coming soon. Matt and Nick about to lose their smile. Peace. Sleeper match of the night. Someone cursed the show was probably Dan Housen. Malachi Black lost. Kind of inappropriate, son. <laughs> <laughs> Derek just did the Dan Housen curse pose. Um, going into this, though, Miro ends up getting beat up by all three guys and put through a table on the outside. Miro was dominating early on. Yes. He was just dropping people like sacks of shit <laughs> off on the side <laughs> of the road. And they ended up jumping him. Clark kind of did a nice spear through the table. Yeah, right? he did. Yo, that was dope. That was a good spear. Oh, actually, he had two good spears. And yeah. the one in the ring. Yes. That wasn't bad. He had two good spears. Miro eventually locks in the game over on Pac, and we think this is it. He's pulling back, but he can't wrench it, and Pac is fighting. Pac eventually tries to get to the rope. He does. Miro pulls him back, and he's going for it again. Malachi Black gets in the ring and missed the shit out of him, and I was like, yes. Miro's out. Black missed. He's down on the ground. He has no clue what's happening. He's like, what the hell? What the hell's going on? Right, right. Down he goes. Clark Connors gets in, and he ends up getting caught into like this, this submission hold. Pat goes up 450 onto Malachi, and then he locks in the brutalizer on uh Clark Connors, and sadly, that's where this ends. Pac is your first ever All Atlantic champion. I thought that was an interesting choice for oh, the yeah, But you know what, though, Pac has gone through so much over the last what two, three years now. Yeah, with getting stuck overseas. Yeah. He he got injured, I think, before him and Hangman were supposed to clash. Yep. They made some moves though when they had to. Pac deserves it. Casey says he definitely deserves it. Uh, totally. All Atlantic Championship match. Miro should have won this. Not mad at Pac, but damn, after that badass promo Miro did a few days ago, uh, Miro to go after Mox. Maybe I think they're going to elevate Miro uh, to a higher level. But I thought this was a great match for Pac, though. Oh, yeah. Pac, the little rat, did it. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, this show couldn't have gone off uh, better. The injury list is long, but all of them pulled and made, put out A plus performances. That bloated roster doesn't look like a bad idea right now. No, Malachi versus Miro. Yeah, I, I'd be yeah. with it. Yeah, get, uh, revenge match kind of. Deanna says, "Could Malachi be getting new members?" You're the uh, professor of dark over here. So, what do you think, good sir? You like that evil shit in wrestling? I do. I do. Does he need more members in the stable, or is he, are they fine? I mean, they got Julia Hart recently. Yeah, but she hasn't done anything yet. So BJ says he got missed it. How will this affect him now? Maybe he turns into a baby face. Maybe it reverses. Maybe, maybe. I I don't know, bro. I I I don't think they need anybody right now. And I don't I don't think they do. Right. Uh, Jesus said happy for Pac. He deserves it. I'm so glad Pac got the win. Love Pac got the win. It was great for him. Uh, that was that match was live 205 live. <laughs> uh, Pack finally got the title in AEW. Yes, he did. All hail King Pack. Exactly. 
I remember that shitty shirt WWE gave when he was king of the cruiserweights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that shirt sucked. Um, but good for him. Happy for him. <sighs> Moving on. We got Shingo Takagi, Darby Allen, and Sting versus ELP. Uh, who was this? The Young Bucks with Hikaleo. Hiromu Takahashi was supposed to be here. It was supposed to happen, and it didn't. It hurt my soul, man. It hurt my soul, man. This was supposed to be something so much more. Now, this card right here just didn't have it in there, man. The The whole thing was just... It wasn't right, man. As you can see, Hiromu was in the original match graphic. I could have had the updated one. I didn't feel like looking for it. Um, Young Bucks... ELP, Hikaleo stayed in the corner. Now, the entrances with this one were pretty cool. Uh, I think a lot of people were going in on this one, but Sting not coming out, and then the Bucks come out to the Bullet Club music. Fans went crazy for that. Sting, though, being in the rafters with a faraway shot because they didn't want you to know that there was probably someone else up there, but Sting right. appearing behind that silhouette after and then jumping off the top of the entranceway. New Jack Sting's one of my favorites, man. Man, listen. Sting, Sting, man, I, I, you got to give Sting credit, bro. No matter what you say, the man is, what, he's like 50, 55? Right. Good night, Sapphire King. Um, The man's still doing things that he shouldn't be doing. 55? St Sting's way past that, I think. I think Sting's in the 60s, bro. Is he? Yeah, he out there. Let's, oh, check, let's check on that. Yeah. I'll dare do some research on that. But, uh... Yeah, Sting's out there, bro. He he's doing what he's got to do, man. And and I'm happy for him. Sting definitely deserves it, man. He spent enough time fighting all those people in the NWO, the Aces and Eights. Let my man Sting rock, man. So he had a little war with the Bullet Club tonight. I'm okay with that. Sting, you're a winner. All right, all right. So this ends up being a really fun. What age you got? 63. Told you. He, he'll retire in two years. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I think that's when he's allowed to take out his retirement with no uh, with no uh, what 10% penalty. Right. So ELP tried to twist things nipples in this match. I can't believe I'm saying this. <laughs> tried to give him a purple nipple. Terrible. <laughs> Anyone want to give someone a Melvin in this? <laughs> if you don't know what that is, that's a terrible thing. Uh, watch Bill and Ted's uh, excellent adventure. Uh, the dudes with attitude didn't have a time bomb, but it was good. Yeah, I wish that uh, Hiromu got to be in this. ELP and Sting were the MVPs. Yeah, ELP did his thing with that back rake, just oh, doing all them rolls for yeah. it. That that was dope. I actually, I, I really like that. Rob said Daryl had a tummy ache. <laughs> <laughs> Daryl the cat is the man. Um, Sting definitely missed his spot too, where he was supposed to grab ELP's nipples. ELP had to like sell it, and Sting went to the outside. He's like, "Oh shit, I was supposed to do this spot in the ring. I don't know if anyone else caught that, but it was just a spot to grab nipples." And he was yeah. probably like, "This is ridiculous." <laughs> <laughs> and ELP like turned back around. They tried to play it off, but it was bad when I saw it. Um, storyline, or I'm sorry, not storyline. Sting eventually no sells a super kick, one of the moves that they said like supposedly helped take him out. He no-sells it, and uh, eventually he drops the Bucks. He gives him the double Scorpion death drop here. ELP ends up getting caught in the ring with Shingo Takagi. Now, if you don't know Shingo Takagi, he is that boy. He was the New Japan World Heavyweight Champion not too long ago, and Shingo just puts on great effing matches. If you want to watch the G1 this year, watch Shingo Takagi. The man puts on great matches. I can't be mad, man. I can't be mad at Shingo. He drops him with the last of the dragon. It's an absolutely devastating move. That, oh, that move was crisp. ELP was on his ass, and it was over. GG, one, two, three. They get the big dub. Um, someone's uh, Someone getting taken off my Mount Rushmore for Sting, Terrell said. <laughs> Sting is a high-flying spot monkey in 2022. Come on, E, and amazing. WWE was powerbombing him in the turnbuckles. Right. That was uh, Jeff Farmer in the rafters, Casey said. Titty Twister of Doom. Uh, how WWE missed out on the dream match of Sting versus Undertaker will always be a crime against the wrestling community. Fact, Shingo is that dude. And that's a perfect place to move on here. September 21st, AEW Dynamite, Rampage, Grand Slam, Chicago. You lucky SOBs are getting another pay-per-view. Tony, I urge you, I beg of you, please 
can we pass it? Can we spread some of the pay per views out? Right. I love you, Chicago. You did a great job tonight. I got to give you your props. You deserve this one. But can we please look at moving out some of these shows? Right. What's up, man? Why can't Buffalo get a show? Right. I don't care about those stupid contracts. I'm getting real pissed at this. Let's start having wrestling appear everywhere. Yes. Cut that exclusivity shit out. All you wrestling companies. Right. Sick of it. Stop it. You, know, you got too many people who want to go see these shows. Let's make it happen. Then, speaking of that, Shota Aminu was caught backstage. The JAS give him his props saying he had a heck of a match. Well, he ends up getting caught with a fireball to the face. Why? Because Chris Jericho's a wizard, damn it. Merlin over here caught him in the face with the fireball. Down he goes. Um, I thought it was great buildup for the, the whole blood and guts. Oh, they, yeah. they did a good oh, job yeah. focusing on Kingston's side and Jericho's side for this. Yeah. Um, you know what? I, I when this when this match finally happens, a match that we did not have, this match will be amazing. Right? Thank you. Chicago is getting too much. Heck, Jacksonville was getting too much at one point. Well, Jacksonville had to get too much, bro. They they were stuck there. Uh, that fireball looked rough. It looked good, man. That that was, like, perfectly done, however they did that. Yeah, it was definitely seamless, bro. Like, you, it was, like, one motion. Whew. I haven't seen one that good since Cornette, man. Cornette and Jerry Lawler. Oh, you, you yeah. Don't, you don't get too much of that, man. Um, let's move into the women's title match here, Derek. Tony Storm challenging Thunder Rosa for the AW Women's Championship in this one, man. Um, I thought this was a fine match. This was good. I, I, I really like this match. I mean, I, I know it was kind of like, uh, I don't know, I, 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 would, I wouldn't perceive it as a, uh, you know, uh, a slowdown match, but I, I really enjoyed it. I, I'm new to Tony Storm, and I wouldn't say relatively new to Thunder Rosa. Thunder Rosa's been on, on the radar for me for a while. But um, these two put on a good match, bro. Like, I, I actually thoroughly enjoyed this match. I agree. I thought they did pretty well in this. Tony Storm dominated early on. Yeah. And at a couple points, I really thought Tony Storm was going to win oh, this. Yeah. Dude, oh, yeah. that hip attack looks so nasty that Tony Storm hits. Yes. Like, it, it just, I don't know, man. Deanna said Rosa could not sell. I, I don't know uh, what you're referring to in that part of the, the matchup here. Uh, Jericho throwing all these fireballs at people. Is he thinking about Kofi? Oh, the coffee incident with Kane when he uh, burned, when Kane burned JR too? Too much fire. Fire. Oh. <laughs> they don't know about that bust the bus. <laughs> uh, Thunder Rosa hits the Thunder Driver. Got a two count. She looked shocked that Tony Storm kicked out. They made her look really strong here, I thought. Yes. And she eventually got the win with the final reckoning. Uh, same move Dustin Rhodes uses. I like that. It was a little nice touch to say, like, that's my that's my uh, mentor. Yep, yep. And that's how we get the win. Yep. Um, let me see here. Jesus said this was a really good women's match. Uh, I mean, she, she couldn't get away with not selling moves. Oh, yeah, well, Tony Storm's a pro. I don't know. I don't know what to believe anymore with that. If she sandbagged or not, I'm moving past it. Hopefully, this leads to uh, great matchups between all of them later on. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's all oh. I could ask for. I bet Juice loves Tony's hip attacks. Come on, Matt. <laughs> Come on, Matt. That's filth. That's filth out here. <laughs> Got to be careful out here. You know what? Another um, ode to uh, Dustin. She hit the. Oh, the gold dust. Yeah, yeah, you did bring that up when we were watching it. Good yeah. point. Touche. Good memory. Good memory. Best women's title match in a while. Okay. I respect the Tokyo. Mm -hmm. I, I thought it was swell. Swell. This was a very wrestling heavy show. So for those yes. who like it, that's what it would be. Look who showed up. My man Chris came out the treehouse to say what's up. Throwing up the Derek order. What's going on, Chris Dezuba? What's happening, brother? Glad you're in here. Um... IWGP US title matches next. Derek, is it safe to say? I want to say it. I want to say it. Fucking match of the night. I told y'all motherfuckers. Sleeper match. This was going to be it. And they Ooh. delivered, bro. Oh, my goodness. Did they ever? Did they? Uh, yo, that. Uh, or, yeah, 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 no, man. Orange has been my boy. But that boy, Will Ospreay? Yet. 
It, Will Ospreay is really good, man. Oh, my God. We got our usual Orange Cassidy shenanigans in all of this, which I was fine with. He did not debut his new song. A new song is rumored to be coming for Orange Cassidy. Um, I believe it's titled Jade. You guys could look it up. I think they're in the process of getting all the rights to it, so that's why we didn't get it. I like the Pixies Where's My Mind for him, but we'll see. Some people seem to think that the other version will be better. Um, Orange was taunting Will Ospreay. Will gets in on the offense. He is able to get a abdominal stretch and put his hand in Orange Cassidy's pocket, and he pulls out the middle finger. Boom. Thank you for censoring yourself. <laughs> and he pulls out the middle finger, and, uh, yeah, pissed off the crowd. What an incredible heel work here by Will Ospreay. Oh, absolutely. Orange Cassidy hit the one move I was begging to see all show. The Michinoku driver beautifully hit. Uh, Orange also landed a stunner, bro, out of the brain buster or whatever that shit was. Like, flipped over. He hit it again perfectly. Bro, whatever transition that was, it was fucking beautiful. Oh, my God. Like, I could watch that match all day, a thousand times over. That was pure gold. Right? Matt Lopez is saying match of the night. Match of the night, I agree with y'all. He said... Rose's title reign feels off, somebody said. Uh, this match was so much better than credited. There's a lot of people who were just hating. Uh, Issa and S-tier. I And if you guys have noticed, I haven't been doing my usual ratings tonight. I'm kind of just testing it out to see. We Let's say we didn't do ratings. Do you like it better or not? That's something I would love to hear from you guys in the comments, too, after the uh, video is finished. Go back in. Just type in the comments for me. Did you like it without the ratings, or do you want the ratings on every match? Let me know. Right. Uh, Osprey versus Cassidy was a sleeper match. Damn it. I wanted Cassidy to win. Hey, now I've been good tonight, BJ. You have been, BJ. Uh, Jane by Jefferson Starship. It was his old indie theme. Thank you, BJ. Uh, Orange Cassidy simply stepping out of the way of the cutter with some good stuff. I always love when Joe does that too. Oh, just yeah. no, <laughs> you're not hitting me with that. Orange was showing people that he could really wrestle, and he can. He was Fire Ant and Chikara. A lot of people don't know that. I'll give you that, BJ. Come on now, E. See, you acting up now. <laughs> Taka's in Suzuki going, Orange is lucky he didn't have a wife. Peace. Peace. So um, after that, Aussie Open uh, got knocked out on the outside. Yo, Orange can't see the springboard flipping plancha, bro. Yo. The boy is nice, dude. Give Orange his flowers, man. Give man. Orange his juice. Man, put, put, put the rose petals on the floor and cover the walkway bro that man is nice y'all play, hating if y'all if i could like i would have just match. played jagged edge right there <laughs> i would have played some jagged edge dude orange is nice with it man man dude i i've 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 seen some great matches over the years but this was oh Oh, oh, Orange Cassidy got hit with that the blade, the uh, I think it's called the hidden blade or whatever from behind. Yeah. Then he got hit with the Stormbreaker. One, two, three. Will Ospreay yes. wins. Phenomenal match. Like you got to see the end transitions that happened and how it led all up to that. Um, after that, though, following the match, United Empire come down or into the ring for the beatdown. Aussie Open gets there. Here comes Rapunky Vice. Everything stops and Shibata's music hits. And everybody I was watching with that knew who Shibata was lost their shit. Shibata came down to the ring and he was smacking motherfuckers like he had walked in and just won the lottery at work. He was like, sit down, you. What, you? Sit down, you. It was the best thing, bro, to just see people getting slapped just right down. It, it's it's great. Just, just slaps. Just slaps everywhere. Just slap, slap. Slap, slap. It was Shibata, baby, and I'm so happy to see him back. Shibata suffered a really bad head injury. I don't know if anybody knows this, and he's been teaching at the dojo, but Shibata, like, headbutted someone, bro, and his head was bleeding. Like, I got to show you after, Derek, why it was amazing for Shibata to be out there doing what he's doing. Um, Chris said, I missed it. I spent the night at the treehouse, had to come by and show some love, though. I appreciate that, Chris. You're always welcome to come in here, brother. We miss you being in the chats, man. Uh, BJ said, this match had my friend who isn't into New Japan Strong Style uh, loving it and intrigued the whole time, and he loved Will's finisher. For sure, man. For sure. Top Gun Hollywood back in the chat. Derek, you like sleep? <laughs> who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> Headbutt hurt around the world. Yeah, man. That was that was rough. But Shibata beat ass, and I thought it was cool. And then at the end, Orange Cassidy gave him the sunglasses. Yeah. It was a beautiful moment. Beautiful moment. 
I it's love it. Beautiful moment. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> Next up, Zack Saber Jr., one of the best technical wrestlers in the world, is taking on a mystery man. The mystery man, Derek, ends up being the former wrestler Cesaro, now known as Claudio Castagnoli. He is back to his old independent name. Great pickup by Tony Khan, oh, in my opinion. Excellent pickup, bro. Excellent. Mwah, beautiful. They did this so well. Fantastic. Bro, I got worried. When the match first started, I thought he was about to dog walk ZSJ. Yo. He came in, European uppercut, let's go, boom, yeah. boom, did my neck, and then he did the uh, the neutralizer and pinned him, and I was like, oh. yo, thank God he kicked out. Yes. So I was like, this man is going to get kicked out of Suzuki Goon <laughs> immediately. <laughs> Minoru Suzuki is going to be out here beating ass right. if this happens. Oh, my God. That, like, I've, I've never seen anybody come in like that and, like, actually have me worried. Yeah, that that was some shit, bro. It it was. It definitely was. I I don't know, man. It was so good though. So good. He he was just out there. I thought he was going to dog walk him. He had absolute crazy strength in the match. At one point, bro, he walked up the stairs with somebody. Oh my god. How? How are you doing this? Bro, up the stairs and then power bombed him into the ring with one arm. For no reason. Just like, uh, oh, it's nothing. It's not a big deal. I got this, guys. Bro. I got this. It's it's all good here. This man is too strong for his own good. Right? Um, and I can tell you guys right now that my soundboard is actually missing some sounds. But just for Casey, I'm going to have to do my best impression here. Mystery Man should have been Paul White. Well, well, it's the big show. <laughs> Big Show was not the mystery man, though. It was Claudio Castagnoli. Um, dude, absolute amazing. We got the classic Cesaro swing. I don't yes. know what we're going to call it. It's probably going to be the Claudio swing, something from now on. Uh, sharpshooter was attempted. A well-done sharpshooter. Yes. Eat shit, Ruby. <laughs> Pay attention <laughs> how you do this. Uh, I'm sorry, Ruby, but that sharpshooter was the worst in history. You took the title from The Rock, the worst sharpshooter I've ever seen. Uh, I have no problem with it being Cesaro. It should have been Kurt or Sasha. If Tony Khan signs uh, Los Ice Crimps, he's a lock for a Booker of the Year. Uh, it's Claudio's time. Hell yeah. Claudio time. His theme song is fire. I don't like the theme song. I don't know, man. Whoever said Paul White is getting timed out, he said. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> dude, sharpshooter eventually gets hit. Yo, Zack Sabre Jr., let me not underestimate this. He was hitting some great octopus stretches, heel oh. hooks. He was doing his damnedest in this match to neutralize, no Absolutely. pun intended, uh, Claudio. And eventually, Rico Laban got reversed into the European clutch. It's kind of a, a nice pinfall predicament. Only gets a two count for it. And then he got caught and Rico Laban for the win. The only thing I was missing was the UFO. If you've never seen Cesaro right. hit that, Google it. It is a thing of beauty. So well done, man, uh, when he hits it. I love that move. But Rico Laban got hit for the win, and that was his finisher before, and I think he's going to be using that again. Oh, yeah. The uppercuts oh, were there. Yeah. Positive debut? Like, where does this rank all-time debut for you? Is it? It's, I don't think it's the greatest, but... I don't think it's the greatest, but this this was definitely really good. Like, I, I don't... Like, that, that, that was a huge pop for him. Like, a huge pop. Um... It's 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 up there, but it's not uh, it's not it's not God tier, right? Alan Angels about to knock Z stop it with the Alan Angels uh, over submissions encounters. Yeah, it was fun though. It, it was, was fun. It was. I don't think nothing's gonna beat that all out like trifecta debut. Ooh, no, they were just they were just blowing the load there. They did not care that night. They were like, ah, what's another debut? Who cares? Right. Come on out, guys. Come on out. <laughs> Um, let's get into this matchup here. The IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. We got Jay White, Hangman Page, Kazushiko Okada, and Adam Cole. Adam Cole, Booker T was talking shit. Booker T's wrong. I don't really give a shit about that. Adam Cole's the man. I thought he was showered with love tonight, and as he should be. Adam Cole's a great dude. Absolutely. Um, Alliance was performed early on in this one, Derek. We had Cole and Jay White working together against Okada and Page. They fight back. Uh, we saw a lot of like the four-way stuff that you're going to get two on the outside, two on the inside, everyone on the outside, everyone hitting dives. Right. 
it started off really fun. It, it was good. But we got the little four-way battles of chops and punches with everybody. We even saw a buckshot lariat on Jay White, but Okada breaks it up. It was getting really good. Air raid crash on Adam Cole. Adam Cole is down for the count, baby. And he's down. Um, eventually, there was a big elbow drop off the top by Okada on Adam Cole. And then Okada got caught with a blade runner. And then Jay White pins Adam Cole. I was not expecting this. One, two, three. Yeah. Ended out of nowhere. I think Adam Cole was hurt. Deanna mentioned it. That's what my thought process was. I'm like, he yeah. looked like he tried to kick out. And he couldn't get his shoulder up. He was like, yo, I can't move my shoulder. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I want to say it looked like he may have uh, dislocated his shoulder. I could be wrong, so don't quote me on that. But it, it looked like that's what happened to me. I don't know. I've never had a dislocated shoulder. I've never seen one, but... It, he something went wrong where he couldn't move his arm to get it up, man. Um, ooh, Claudio on the media scrum said he was supposed to debut on the next ROH pay per view on July 23rd before Brian's injury change of plans. Interesting. Uh, I'm sick of the IWC being fixated on size. Like you're not Vince. Who cares if they can, as long as they can go in the ring. That match was amazing till the end. I agree, Casey. Uh, Derek, were you left disappointed by all of this too? Uh, like I felt like they were buying time at the end. Like the Bucks came out, they were trying to like stay yeah. face. Um, I don't know if I, I don't know if I would say I was disappointed. I, I, I think it was. I think the dis, if if we're talking disappointment, I think it was, it was sh- overshadowed by Cole being hurt. Right. Uh, BJ said that he's wondering if the labrum injury got worse and maybe the rip cord for the rainmaker messed him up where he pulls you into it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe he just tugged on it the wrong way. He felt numb and he couldn't get out of it for a second. Something went wrong there. They, I felt like they sent the undisputed elite out to cover. Jay White kind of went to the back, like, "What the hell's going on?" Right. Um, that's it, though. Like, it, it was left disappointing, but I think something went wrong with Cole, and that's what ended up happening. Right. That, that, I think that's why I can't say I was disappointed because something unforeseen happened. And we don't know what it was, so I can't really be disappointed about it. I, I'm upset that he got hurt, but I, I don't. I don't want to say I'm upset with how it ended because there was nothing you could do with it being that way. Yeah, you were just stuck with what you had, right? And let's move into the main event here. This is the one that a lot of people have been waiting for. And if you're a New Japan fan, you've been waiting for years for this match. John Moxley, Hiroshi Tanahashi. I just found out today that Tony Khan has been blocking this match from happening because he wanted it to happen on AEW soil. Well, hand got forced here. Right. It was happening. And happy that it was happening for the AEW Interim Championship, a.k.a. you're the number one contender until Punk's back. Right. So... John Moxley starts off aggressive opening the match. Tanahashi got put through a table for all those draft uh what what is it? DraftKings. DraftKings players out there. Hopefully you only picked one table bump for this one. Uh John Moxley is bleeding profusely, really bad. And Tanahashi uh hits a top rope dive on the floor. Blood is leaking even worse after that. We get a paradigm shift, but Tanahashi kicks out at the last second. A lot of people were playing it close with them kickouts. Now, I know y'all like Kurt Angle, but cut that shit out. Yeah. yeah. About to mess up. A uh, high fly flow gets hit, but um, that eventually got turned into the bulldog choke. Moxley eventually hits the Death Rider for the three count. I did like how he came out with Regal, and he had yes. like his New Japan music start off, too. I forgot to bring that up. But Moxley is the interim champion. He's bleeding. We're about to get a special moment with both baby faces. It looks like Mox is going to show him some respect. And here comes the JAS. They put a beat down on. And Blackpool Combat Club comes out to make the save with Eddie Kingston, Santana, and Ortiz. And Claudio gets the big save to look like the star of the pay-per-view. Pretty yes. dope moment, I think, for uh, the former Cesaro. Claudio Castagnoli got to sh- close the pay-per-view and look like a star on top. I agree with the whole decision 100%. It was really good, man. Um, let me see. Derek, you are awesome in the world in 2022. Derek is awesome. Thank you. Appreciate you. ROH Death Before Designer, July 23rd in Lowell, Massachusetts on pay-per-view ticket info. Tony Khan said during the media scrum. Okay. So we've got another pay-per-view next month. I'll see if I can cover that. That might be one of those audio exclusives. We'll see what happens with that. 
Uh, he said, praying Cole is okay. Same here, man. Prayers for Adam Cole. Hopefully he's not injured. Uh, seriously, the New Japan guys are weird with those kickouts. Way too close. Definitely messed up on some, but oh well. Uh, Kingston hates Claudio. Yeah, he did spit on him after. My man Eddie was tripping, but I like that. I think that's just to add to the dissension between the two. Yeah, I'm sure that that's going to be a matchup as well later on. I know Kingston's not in the Blackpool Combat Club, so I wouldn't be surprised if we get a Kingston Claudio match in the oh, future. Yeah, that that should be good. But overall, Derek, you can tell me if you agree or disagree. I want to give this pay per view an A minus. Chat, let me know your grade for the show. I'm going A minus for this show. I'm right there with you, bro. A minus to the fullest. I, I thought it was very well done. Um, I wanted to read some of these off here in the chat beforehand. Let's see here. Matt Lopez says, do you think Mox versus Punk will be at All Out or Grand Slam? When do you see it happening, Derek? Mm-hmm. Is Punk back by uh, the beginning of spring, or do you think he's going to need those couple of weeks? He might need those couple of weeks. Okay. I think I think he'll need those couple of weeks. Because you when he first started wrestling, you could tell he was out of shape. He, he wasn't, Ter- like, in ring, in shape. Terrell's taking Grand Slam for it. Yeah, I say uh, grandson. Casey says A for the show. Deanna says A plus. Uh, we got Matt Lopez A minus for Forbidden Door. EPW A plus. Terrell says A plus. Solid A for me. Top to peachy bottom. Come on, Beach. Uh, Jesus says nine point five out of ten. That's a high score. Yes, that's really good, man. Listen, I think A is the fair score right now that I'm seeing from the chat. Yeah, A A is a fair score. A is a fair score. I can't be mad. And any, anything outside of an A period is B Boy Skyline says A minus. He was watching live with us. I, I respect it. We, we had a conversation about this. Also, by the way, shout out to Rob, man. We had pizza tonight. We even got some uh, chicken wing dip. Shout out to my man Lou. He came through with some uh, some short ribs. Yo, we killed, we killed them ribs. I'm going to kill them real. Mashed potatoes. Mashed we, we, potatoes. Snacks on deck, man. It was a fun night, man. I love watching pro wrestling, and we all get to eat and yes. just have some fun, man. That's what it's yes. all about when it comes to it. Uh, Jesus says Mox is wrestler of the year contender. There's a lot of them, bro. I think Dax is on there. Uh, Will Ospreay. Shoot, you could even argue maybe even some Zack Sabre Jr. and Okada. There's a lot of guys who are going to be on there, and I can't wait for us to do our end-of-the-year awards and uh, talk about that. Positively, he's going A- minus as well with us. Yes, yes, yes. I like it. I like it. Uh, I mean, absolutely. Again, like I or, said. I'm sorry, Rob, not chicken wing dip. If I said that that was incorrect, it was Philly cheesesteak dip, and it was delightful. You know what deserves the Pornhub song? That did. That yeah. it was a crime. That's how good it was. Like damn good, bro. Yes. Wonderful. That that hit the spot quick. Right. Uh Yuda Casey's talking about some Tajiri wrestler of the year. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. We gotta talk about this. But listen, guys, if you love what we're doing here, like I said, make sure you support everything pro wrestling. Go buy yourselves a shirt. There's stuff in the description. Use the Manscape code. Do something that's gonna benefit you, but help us at the same time. That's how this community grows. I would like for each of you to find one person this week that's a wrestling fan and say, "Yo, you should check out my boy. Tell him check out everything pro wrestling. It's a fun show." Try to get in on the action, man. We talk pro wrestling in here. He listens to everybody. I hope you guys feel like I listen to all of you and bring you up in the chat. I don't ask you guys for super chats and stuff like that. I would like to do some donation streams eventually down the line and uh, be able to give some of that money away to some good causes. And I have some that I want to use and do in the future. So I thank you all for that. And uh, I I, I don't know here. Uh, Let me see here. Matt Cardona, before the injury, was wrestler of the year. Another person you could argue for. He was champion everywhere all over the indies, man. It's it's another good argument. Yeah. That's what this is all about, man. Pro wrestling, pure fun. Um, We got people popping in. Uh, Y'all have a great night. Appreciate you. Thank you, BJ. Good causes like my bank account. (laughs) We'll be in talks, Casey. We'll be in talks about that. But listen. We're going to head on out of here. It's going to be a late night. We both got work in the morning. For myself and the man they call Derek, we will be back this Wednesday with a Dynamite review of Blood and Guts. Hopefully you guys can join us in the live review following Dynamite around 10.05. And, uh, yeah, we will be in there before I forget CSJ had that peach. Come on, E. Come on, E. Zach Sabre Jr. had a rough night tonight. Right. Yeah, he did. Um. But we'll, we got you guys covered when it comes to pro wrestling, and I hope you guys stick with us. Thank you so much. I love hosting and talking pro wrestling with you all. For myself, 
for the man they call Derek. We are out. One. One. Everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you. Listen to the podcast for the people. The best show that's here, so listen in. Let the knowledge begin. The opinions, the lesson, yes. By the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many in this can understand. Uh, this the podcast to show you who I am. Uh, Conrad Cushman, the legend in the plans. Uh, please listen every day to the showcase. The opinions and knowledge that anyone can take. Showing you how it is done, proving I am number one, what a legend becomes, this is now my time to show you that I am here, uh, this podcast just to make it loud and clear, uh, by the fans, uh, for the fans, uh, not many who's here can understand, uh, everything pro wrestling, they can never be you, listen to the podcast here for the people, the best show that's here, so listen in, let the knowledge begin, the opinion and the lesson, yes, everyday pro wrestling, they can never be you, listen to the podcast for the people, the best show that's here, so listen in, let the knowledge begin, the opinions, the lesson, yes.